if I started playing, um, I started off playing sort of amateur football for Chile Leaf Nomads in the Stockport area, um, Stockport Junior Blues. So they were my teams at six, seven years old. Yeah. Um, and then I was picked up by Manchester United at eight years old. Um, went in on a trial. I uh, was offered a place there uh, and stayed there for like six years. Um, so it's a great experience playing at Manchester United. It's a club of support. Um, loved it. Um, we went away to Marbella, America, and some great coaches there. Uh, obviously, great facilities uh, at the time. You know, Man United winning all the leagues, um, Champions League. It was, it was amazing. Um, so, spent a good time there at Man United. Um, and then afterwards, uh, then actually stepped signed for Stockport County at 14 years old. Um, Stockport were in a championship. Um, players like Sheffield Cucci up front. Um, Ali Gibb on the wing, um, you know, it was a big club. Um, the stadium was full. We used to get tickets to go and watch. The stadium was full. Um, so in the academy, big club. Um, managed to get a scholar there at 16 years old. Um, and then at 17, uh, made my debut for the first team at Stockport, which was against Wrexham. Um, so that was sort of my youth career in, in, in sort of a professional sense. Um, at the same time, obviously, you know, played for school as much as I could. Still, even though I shouldn't have done, still went and played some amateur football when I could um, in between. Um, you know, as much experience as I could as, in terms of playing, you know, I just I just loved football um, and I couldn't get enough of it. Um, so that was sort of my, my, my career, you know, young career playing. Um, and then from there, in the last sort of 15 years, I had, you know, various sort of Northwest clubs as a, as a professional. So Barry Morecambe. Uh, Halifax um, went out to Belgium for a stint to play in Belgium um, and then the last sort of seven eight years of my career uh, as a part-time player was in, in the Welsh Prem for Bangor City yeah. um, which again you know was, was an amazing experience playing Europa League and um, playing some Welsh Cup finals um, you know a big club in Wales so um, really lucky to have such a long career and um, you know, 17 years of, of non-stop playing, really. Um, and it's something you love. So alongside that, obviously, um, it runs parallel, really, I suppose, in, in, in a sense, is that, you know, you're thinking about what you might do next as a player. Um, it's probably, you know, did my GCSEs, did my A-levels um, through Stockport County on, on the scholarship. Um, but it's probably like early 20s when I started thinking about, you know, what were things I'm a, do I like doing? Um, and it was coaching. I did some work in the acute community. Um, I actually wrote out um, to Chile Hume School, which I think you were there at the time, um, and was just looking for some coaching opportunities to, to run alongside my playing because um, I always knew that there was going to be something else afterwards that I needed to do. Um, and from there, I started thinking about, well, actually, I enjoy this, so what do I need to do next? And it was you know, getting through my coaching badges, um, getting as much experience again as I could at different places. So in school settings, in academies, um, and then work my way through my badges. Um, Bango, you know, again, it was great because they, they were able to put me through my badges through the Welsh FA. Um, so I'm a UA for a coach now. Um, and, you know, I've had so many different experiences in schools, like I said, in academies that I think I've been able to merge together now. And, um, you know, I've really enjoyed the coaching as much as I, as, as I did the playing um, and it's ran, ran parallel, which is great. Um, and now I'm just in the early stages of just solely um, in my career as, as, as not not a player, but obviously in a football club in, in the capacity I mean, as academy manager. Um, so it's been a long journey and I've now ended up back uh, to my original roots, really, in the sense that, you know, I'm back at Stockport County, um, huge club, uh, probably not. In, in a true position where they should lie, really. You know, they're in the, the National League at the minute, but uh, they're probably more like a, a championship club. Um, and there's huge plans to sort of, and a vision to get back up to, to where they should be. And I'm just really, you know, excited to have the opportunity to be involved in that and to, to oversee the academy um, and to work towards bringing some young players in, in, into that first team. It's probably um, the most nerve-wracking, um, you know, experience I've had. The build-up even to the game, you know, you're on the coach with the first team. But I'd experienced going away with the first team to fixtures and being part of the squad, but not making the bench or 
being on the bench and not coming on. But I was actually told, look, you know, you're going to start in this game. Um, so the manager was Sammy McElroy at the time. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, we're going to start you. Uh, you'll be your first, you know, your debut for the club. Um, so travelling in on the coach, it was really nerve-wracking. Um, I remember some of the senior players, uh, not so much having an arm around me, but actually, you know, teasing me a little bit, saying, are you nervous, are you this? And, um, and I was, you know. I think it helped. There was a couple of other young players at the time around um, in the same sort of circumstance as me. So I had Adam LaFondre, yeah. um, striker, obviously went on and played for Reading in the Premier League. I think he's out in India at the moment. Um, so he was in the squad as well. So he was making his his debut with me. Um, so that obviously helped. Um, we used to sit together and, and you know and, and share rooms on overnight stays. And so that was a great support. Um, but I, I suppose, you know, you're nervous, but then you know, you're excited. This is what you've worked towards your whole career. And um, when you get on the pitch, that, that nerve does, the nerves calm down a little bit, especially if you do a couple of things right in the first 10 minutes. Um, you know, and I remember really enjoying the game and having a good game. Um, so, yeah, it was, was nerve wracking. But, you know, afterwards, I was I was quite proud, proud to, uh, to, to play. Responsible for shaping sort of the future direction of the academy, which, you know, and, and its staff and players and I think ultimately, you know, we, it's aligning what, what the vision is for the academy with the club's overall vision for me and, yeah. and, and making sure that, you know, we, we have an academy that um, produces players um, and fits into a vision of making it a sustainable club. You know, if you take crew, for example, of what they've done yeah. for years now is produce lots of young players um, you know that have played for Crew's first team and then gone on even higher than, than Crew where they are at the moment in League One um, and they've sold them on and made, and made money and it's made that club sustainable and I think it's you know looking at that academy and how can we achieve something like that now for Stockport County um, obviously within that there's loads of day-to-day -day things you know I'm, I'm coaching quite a lot um, yeah. which, I, which I really enjoy um, We've got some great players, 16 to 19 year olds. Um, we've had three or four of them make debuts already this season. One played against West Ham in the FA Cup only a few days ago. Um, so I'm coaching a lot. Um, I'm working closely with the first team staff, obviously, because we've got to build that bridge between an academy to first team. So when those young players are crossing across that bridge, is, there's a lot of communication needed. Um, and obviously working closely with, with, with Simon Wilson, who's director of football, um, who oversees, you know, everything at the club from, from first team to academy. Um, you know, so there's loads going on at the minute with, with, with the football club, like I said, and lots of developments in terms of staff, facility. Um, so it's, it's all go at the moment. It, 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 there's no right or wrong answer, I think, for high performance and what, what it is and how you describe it. I think... I think different organisations and people, you know, there's different ways of ju justifying how you describe it. But I think for me, it's like consistently beating your competitors, you know. Yeah. So, and, and when I mean competitors, you know, apples with apples, not not apples with pears. So, mm. uh, you know, you're not going to compare crew with Man United because it's, it's totally different, different leagues, different uh, demographic areas, uh, different purposes and finances. So. I think if you if you can consistently beating your competitors, I think if you're performing at the highest possible level, but importantly that you're sustainable at that level, so you're not jumping up, say into the Premier League, and then all of a sudden you have a massive downturn and you end up in League Two. Um, yeah. You know what clubs are staying in those leagues for for, for a sustainable period, um, and then also you know. What, what are your goals as your, as your organisation? What's your purpose and your goals? And if you're achieving them, for me, that, that, that's high performance. You know, you, you, you're setting out what you want to do and you're achieving it. Um, so I think those are three, three important things when you, when you talk about high performance. Yeah. There's certainly a, a clear culture in terms of some of the things I've already picked up on at Stockport County at the minute that, that have come from first team level is that, look, you know, discipline is massive, um, yeah. and that's on and off the pitch. And I think if you if you think about on the pitch, obviously, um, you know, n not giving away fouls around the box, um, you know, not not debating decisions from the referee, um, 
not getting caught into sort of confrontation with opponents and getting yellow cards and red cards. Um, you know, discipline to carry out what the manager's asking you to do on the pitch. Um, all those things are massive. And I think if you do those things, you, you look at Stockport County's first team, I think, I think when Jim Gannon's, you know, been in charge, they've won the Fair Play Award quite a few times. Um, off the back of that, you know, if you're not conceding free kicks and you're disciplined, yeah. you're not going to concede so many goals. Um, so there's always an outcome from that as well. So, you know, the culture is massive, um, massively important. Um, and then the discipline off the pitch, you know, when you think about, you know, players, what do they need to do? They need, they need to respect each other. They need to be on time for things, you know. I think a lot of players, if they've been around football, um, you know, through academies and through schools and grassroots teams, they will have been used to being um, to being disciplined on a pitch. I think I think um, a lot of clubs now are instilling that from an early age um, and getting into good habits. Um, so certainly picked up a lot already whilst being at the club. Um, and then there's other examples. I think I think Barcelona is a good one. Um, when you look at you know humility in terms of part of their culture is, you know, they're a very successful club, uh, very successful team, you know, over the past 10 years. And But they're very humble. Um, I think Carlos Puyol, Puyol is a, a good example, you know, when he's captain there. And, um, you know, he was always that humility um, and setting that culture. You know, I, mem I remember them winning 5-0 in one game and the players, a couple of players were, were celebrating, maybe over overly celebrating, and he stopped it straight away and got them to jog back in back yeah. into position and I think I think he instilled that you know humility and part of that culture there at Barcelona um, and it's important that you know where, wherever it is and whatever club there'll, there'll be different cultures but it's how people act it and behave it on a daily basis isn't it? and how they believe in it um, I think that's what's important um, yeah, doing it day in day out isn't it yes yeah. in that, in that organisation so is it I think I think one of my lows, you know, when I think about it, was <clears throat> it ended up turning into a positive. I think yeah. um, at 25, you know, I was at Berry um, in the first team at Berry, and and I, and, I, and I had a couple of injuries, tendonitis, um, yeah. and I couldn't get over those injuries. And I had a couple of operations, and and actually, you know, it was the end of my career full time, um, you know, and that that was devastating. That was a real low, you know. I'd been used to playing, you know, full time since leaving school, 16 to 25 years old. Um, and, you know, it, it, you can't really prepare for, for certain things, I don't think. But, you know, what it did do is push me into coaching more. Um, and actually, then I discovered the next part of my career, which was, you know, playing for Bangor City part time um, and going down my, the coaching route. Um, I really enjoyed really enjoyed it and actually it was probably more successful for me that that seven eight year period of, of being a part-time player yeah. and getting educated um you know at the end of that that time you know when i was playing at bang i also did a master's degree and um, you know because you're looking at what's ahead and perhaps i wouldn't have done that that early if i carried on playing full-time um so i look at that as a positive now um but i think you know what? What can you do when when players players are going to come across lows? And I think um, you can prepare them from the start. You know, and make them aware that look, it's not going to be plain sailing. There's going to be ups and downs, um, undoubtedly for everybody. Um, you know, and and then and then when they need you, you've got to be there to support them. You know, listen to them, be there, um, talk about options going forwards. Um, you know, it, it's massively important, and I think. There will be lows, like I said, and what, what the clubs do to support those athletes. I think clubs are doing a lot of things now. Um, you know, for example, we, we at the minute in the academy, we have a, a wellbeing survey, which which is every day for the players. Um, they fill it out. It's, 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 you know, how's your mood? How's your sleep? Are you feeling stressed? Um, loads of things that they'll fill out. And, and off the back of that, you know, if we see a young player who's um, got a few concerns, then we'll, we'll, we'll pick up a conversation. Um, you know, communication is key. Oh, it's a difficult one. Um, I think there's, there's certainly loads of highlights that you, you sort of flash back to. So I think playing Europa League is a big thing for me. Um, you know, going to play now in, in, in the places we played in Denmark, um, 
you know, what a great experience to play in that competition. Um, as a player, that that stands out. Um, I think, you know, playing in Welsh Cup finals for me, massive for me, great experience. Making my debut still stands out yeah. uh, as a massive accomplishment. And finally getting there to where you wanted to be. Um, I remember playing a game against Sheffield Wednesday in front of 25,000 fans. Yeah. Um, so th there's, there's certainly standout moments for me um, in terms of playing. I think I, I think when you sort of look back after you finish, it's like what I'm probably most proud of is just being able to sustain a, a career yeah. as a player for such a long period. You know, So from, from 16 to 33, I, I managed to play football every single year. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the biggest accomplishment. And then alongside that, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, you know, I, I'm really happy to say that I've, I've, I've focused on something else now. And, yeah. you know, I managed to get my UA for A licence and a master's degree. And I'm, I'm not the most academic person. Um, mm -hmm. But football, I think, pushed me into doing this. Um, yeah. You know, and, and the master's degree in sporting directorship, you know, was all sport based. Yeah. Um, you know, material on the course and something I was really interested in and, and, and that allowed me to go, you know, go and do it and get a distinction in there. So I'm quite proud of that as well, you know, in terms of, of, of getting that master's degree. Um, you know, they're, they're probably the two biggest things, I think. Yeah, I, th I think, I think you know, you said there could be a few. I think, I think role models for me have changed, you know, like throughout my years, really. I think I look, I look back as a young player and I, yeah, the players that I used to admire then, because um, as, a, as a role model, you know, for for me being a young player was obviously naturally one of the Man United first team players and the club I supported and played for. So I think about Paul Scholes and Eric Cantona as standing out as, you know, two two individuals that I really admired. I think because they played in the position I played in, yeah, um, could have chosen probably quite a few from there, you know, Giggs and Beckham, but. I think those two for me were the ones I really admired. I, I just loved the way they played, the flair they had. Um, you know, like I said, they played in my position, so I could relate that. Um, but I think when you start sort of getting older as well, you know, you start appreciating players from other teams. So I, I remember Z Zinedine Zidane obviously standing out for Madrid, um, Ronaldo, uh, Thierry Henry. Um, you know, you allowed yourself to start appreciating those players, even though they're from enemy teams. Um, yeah. You know, you started picking out things that you really liked in them and skills and things that you used to do. So, and then I think <clears throat> once once you start looking at other things, not just football, so like my coaching career, you, you've got the obvious coaches, you know, you've got Pep Guardiola, you've got Bielsa now that, that you admire, but, you know, they're not always peop people that, you know, everyone will know. So a lot of the people I look up to in terms of coaching will be from the Welsh FA. Um, I was lucky enough to obviously be mentored on the coaching badges, but then get the opportunity to work with their national teams um, under 14s level. So, you know, I really admired some of the coaches there in terms of the, what they delivered and um, the way they, the manner they were with the, with the players. Um, I thought it was outstanding. Um, so, I, you know, I, I massively admire them. And I think now, you know, later on in, 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 in in, in you know finished playing now and I'm, I'm looking at probably more like leadership you know there are good leaders out there and, and and who do we admire for leading and it doesn't specifically have to be for sport you know and that's probably where I'm at now thinking about you know who do I like who's a good leader um so those are the things that you know those are the people that stood out so far um <clears throat> I think the biggest one for me um the first one will be leading by example so i think whatever i would ask anyone else to do you know in the position i'm in now um staff wise if i asked them to do something that you know would i do that by myself yeah certainly you know i, I would do any sort of role coaching wise any job you know whether that's cleaning the cupboards out whether that's you know preparing the, doing the warm-up whatever that might be um i wouldn't ask anyone to do anything I wouldn't do. Um, you know, so I think leading by example, you know, is a key one. Um, you know, always being on time. So punctuality is massive as yeah. part of leading by example. You know, I, I would never be late. And I think I think that's one thing sport have done for me is like, you know, from an early age, um, especially from 16 upward, you know, you would never be late for um, meeting for, for training or for, 
fixtures or you know you just wouldn't ever be late there would be fines in place um, so that's one reason but it, it's just an expected um behavior you know and, and and you take that with you as you get older and and, and you instill it then because you think it's an important thing which it is uh, so punctuality is massive yeah um, and then the other one which i think is something i've become more self-aware that i think you know, it's something that you know I, I am, which is is quite sincere, and, and sincerity for me is quite a key one. Um, you know, being being more concerned about others, um, yeah. you know, and caring for others for me is important. You know, and you know, within that, you could use loads of different words and behave for, for behaviours like you know having respect and um, you know making sure you respect others and your team. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think sincerity, you know, is is a key one. You know, how do you get to the position you want to be in? Um, I don't think there's an answer in terms of there's no formula. I think the biggest thing, though, is like you said, is like positivity and 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 just to keep being driven to keep going all the time. And if, if you do that, I do believe you make your own look a little bit in terms of where you want to get to. Um, you know, you can't sit back. And I think the worst thing a player can do, I remember having one season where I'd been uh, released from Morecambe. Um, mm. And at the end of the season, I was out of contracts, you know, with no club. And I remember sitting at home thinking, oh, so, someone will pick up the phone, someone will get in touch. Um, yeah. And slowly it got to July and then August and, you know, players were in pre-season training, had, had no phone call. And it got to then September and I was panicking. And I think you can't allow yourself to have that time to just sit back and do nothing. Um, yeah. You know, you've got to get out there and, you know, get out there, get to a club, even if it's a lower level club, get yeah. training. Um, a lot of our young players, we say to them, you know, if, if, we, if we don't give you a pro contract, you know, these are your options. You could yeah. go and do a scholarship in America. You could go and play a lower non-league and carry on your education at university. Um, you know, it's about keeping going all the time. You know, make the most of every single day that you have. Um, you know, you know, at SGS, what, what an opportunity to... At a great school to learn, you know, discover the things you're interested in, gain your experiences, you know, be curious, ask the, the staff there, you know, there's a lot of expert staff in different fields, you know, ask them questions, but make the most of it because how many how many times do you hear people say how quickly it goes, that you, you know, and then you you look back and think, oh, do you know what, I, I, you know, it's great at school, I love school, I miss the friends that I had at school or the people that I knew at school, um, I wish I did a bit more there, I wish I made the most of it. Um, so I think that's one big thing, for, you know, to make sure that every day you wake up and think, right, what am I going to do today? And Gosh, I, I don't think um, you can judge it on just the playing. I think the different players um, that are obviously the best two players in the world um, for, for a long time now. Um, I think I'd go Messi. I, I think what probably tempts me that way is like his loyalty to Barcelona. I think he's, you know, he's been there for 13 years and I, I don't think, um, you know, Ronaldo is unloyal by any means, but I think he, you know, it's rare, isn't it, to see a player stay at a club for so long. Um, so I think, I think I probably edge towards Messi. I think he sort of, you know, is Mr. Barcelona now. And uh, when you think of Barcelona, you, you think of Messi in the same breath. Um, and, you know, he, he's obviously a great player. Um, you know, I love watching him play. Um, you know, and I, th I think about football as what do I like, you know, he, he, he basically is what I like to see is his technique above everything. Um, you know, so for me, it doesn't matter how big, quick, strong you are, you know, if technically you're good, then, you know, you've got a chance. And I think for, for, for me, that's, you know, Messi's unbelievable. 